good afternoon good evening and good morning to um, everyone from across the world uh, welcome to the session on diet for the mind with mr as sridharan so a little about uh, the session uh, so what are the right ingredients and perfect recipe for a balanced effective mind that delivers success that is enjoyable and inclusive to know all of this you have to be with us for the entire session and let me introduce you to our speaker today uh, mr sridharan is a new age philosopher and a self management expert he has spent over 20 years in the study and research of ancient wisdom and its practical application in the modern world his focus has been to help individuals to live life to their full potential experiencing peace and prosperity sridharan has conducted over 7500 lectures seminars workshops etc in various parts of the world for a diverse audience the topics for these lectures are either general subjects or is customized based on the audience sridharan is the senior disciple of swami parthasarathy he has completed the three year residential course at the vedanta academy in india and has dedicated his life to help people improve their quality of living through vedanta and the ancient wisdom so i would now like to introduce uh, mr s a sridharan over to you sir thank you hello am i live uh, pallavi am i hello hello looks like i went alive sir you are live now oh hi there seems to be some mistake i am supposed to be in another session looks like the software picked up sridhar instead of sridharan hello who is around are you guys hello hi hello ladies and gentlemen in any case since i am here my name is sridhar not sridharan <laughs> and uh, i do happen to know sridharan quite well and a uh, very interesting story about i think about 12 or 13 years ago i got mixed up with my life right i was almost broke bankrupt and uh, stressed out no sleep uh, and uh, decided to leave this world not for real not for real but leave the material world and go to himalayas and uh, spend my life there or i i don't know what i was thinking but i ended up in malas and um, that's where i met sridharan uh, he was giving a lecture in the evening and uh, i could hear some people are listening to him very very intently i walked into the room sat there and i uh, really liked what he was saying and uh, then after the class i met him i took him uh, he took me uh, for dinner and then over the meal he spent uh, i think about an hour or two with me something changed in my life after that the next day morning we were on the walk we were on the yoga yoga sessions then we go to his class we have lunch then we take a little break and then evening walk evening yoga and his class he to walk me through each of the uh, problem uh, that my mind uh, was going through those days he could identify what is the diet my mind needed so long story short i come back from himalayas in about 10 days back back in action uh everybody in my company noticed the huge difference i am more pleasant i am taking decisions in split seconds and another long story short from bankruptcy we have created a 2000 plus people company and uh, uh, we reached out to more than 25 countries and i can't imagine my life without that meeting by chance meeting with sridharan in malayas 
I'm so glad to have him here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, is what he preaches is uh, not about God or spiritualism. He preaches how to provide diet for your mind. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad to have him here. Uh, Saurabh, can we have Sridharanji live, please? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you, Sridharan Garu, for uh, uh, you know uh, sparing your time. I know you have been uh, traveling around the Gulf um, region, uh, preaching teaching people uh, and we really appreciate you to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, now the Sridhar will leave and Sridharan will stay. Thank you very much, uh, Sridharan. Uh, over to you. Thank you. And let me tell you, this is the best introduction I ever had. I've never had a better introduction and uh, about me till now. It's been 20 years. And thank you, Mr. Sridhar Reddy. He is more like a family for us, and uh, I always wish and uh, pray for his well-being, peace, and prosperity. So, thank you for the opportunity. The diet for the mind. That's the focus today. Then we'll start with why the mind needs to be on diet. Then, what is the mind and the, what is the intellect? Then, we'll proceed to three types of action which we perform. And what are the three conditions of the mind we go through? And finally, I'll give you the diet plan for the mind. So friends, brace yourself. It's, a, it's going to be a, not a learning session. It's a, I wouldn't say learning curve. It's a creative curve for you. Creative curve. So why the mind needs to be on a diet? We all understand the importance of physical fitness and the need for a diet for the physical body. And what is a diet? It's a plan and a program you have so that you hit the optimum potential of your physical body. That's the a diet for the physical body. Now, much more in the present scenario, we understand the need for mental fitness. In fact, everyone talks about mental fitness these days, especially after the COVID, the pandemic. The, I would say the, the drop in the economy, possible job losses or the death scenario or the relationship issues which is happening, much more the need for mental fitness. And let me tell you, we are, or most of us are working on mental fitness, but what we work on is a minuscule aspect of mental fitness, which is what I call as intelligence. We gain intelligence, which is through the books, universities, schools, you learn about a, a subject with which you become proficient, whereby you get into a job or a profession or a business and you improve the standard of living. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. We are working on ourselves, but a small aspect of it. The, the, what is the Thai group or this conference? I mean, you're all intelligent people. You're all successful or you want to be progressive in your field of activity. Therefore, you are where you are. But has it really helped us? Has it helped us to deal with the pandemic? Or has it helped us to deal with the relationship issues? If you're facing any kind of issues, then you need a diet plan for the mind. That's why, the, the, therefore, that's the, that's the important aspect here. So, what's happening? Intelligence is wonderful, friends. But along with intelligence, you're using the mind plus the intelligence. Mind plus intelligence would create what I call as ego. It's a small word, but it has a phenomenal impact in our life. Ego is defined as the need and necessity to prove yourself better than anyone else. The expansion for the word ego, anyone taking notes, I would suggest this. E-G-O is exaggerated glorification of oneself. That's ego. 
with mind and intelligence predominantly, there is every possibility you will become egoistic. And with ego comes all the issues in life. That's why I'm suggesting. So, and there was a study done. And they said 90% of people who quit jobs, they, they say they don't quit jobs, they quit people. People quit people when they get their ego involved with another person. So that is why I said intelligence is important, but that alone is not necessary. That alone is not enough. You need a strong intellect. A diet plan of the mind requires a strong intellect. The great Swami Vivekananda, one of the, one of the most uh, profound uh, Hindu monks the world has seen, he made a simple but a very pertinent statement. He said, conquer your mind, you conquer the world. Fall a prey to your mind, you become a victim of the world. I repeat, conquer your mind, you conquer the world. Fall a prey to your mind, you become a victim of the world. So that's why I say, therefore, to conquer your mind, your mind needs to be on a diet. And there is no such diet plan in the world for the mind. You want a diet plan for your body? There are various ways for the physical body. Diet plan for the mind, it takes, I don't know where you can find it. I, I wish we can Google it, but I'm glad uh, you, you can't find it on the Google. I'm glad you're on, you're on this auditorium. And it, I will explain to you this entire need for the diet plan for the mind. Now, we will start with the second aspect of the, the master class is what is the mind and intellect? Mind is where your emotions arise, your feelings arise, your impulses arise. Saurabh, if you can put on the, the slide, the mind and intellect. Mind is where, I repeat, mind and intellect, both are thoughts. An indiscriminate flow of thoughts is a mind. A discriminate flow of thoughts is your intellect. <coughs> mind and as I mentioned, the mind, the it has, it produces impulses. Somebody tells you something and you have an impulse. And uh, when I say impulse, it is, uh, I think you can see the screen. In a, am I right? You're all able to see the screen, the mind and intellect. It's coming up. Okay. It's coming up. So I mean, I, I, Sora will be able to uh, put it across. Mind, I'm just repeating it. Mind is mind is where your ah, now it's coming up. So the mind is where your impulses arise, your emotions, your feelings, your likes and dislikes. Now you have it on the screen. The various feelings and emotions like kindness, compassion, gratitude, love, or anger, jealousy, obsession, all these feelings, emotions arise from the mind. Impulses. Impulses, you may go for a, a, a dinner, get together, and so you, you, meet some, you meet a friend and, and she says, hey, what happened? You put on weight? One, what, that impulse you receive you know, arises from the mind. You get angry. Uh, the likes and dislikes. You like to sleep late. You dislike to wake up early. You like junk food. You dislike what, what they call as healthy juices. Mind, intellect is the, the faculty of thinking, reasoning, logic, analysis, decision making. So this is the mind and intellect. All of us have the mind and intellect. The entire diet plan for the, for the mind is using your intellect. As a result, you are able to handle your mind in a better way. So now you can take off the uh, slide. Uh, sort of. So... These are the, the three, these are the, the mind and intellect. Next is, there are three kinds of action which we perform. All of us, from morning till night, from birth till death, we are performing action. An action could arise from the mind. In Sanskrit, we call it manas. Intellect is buddhi. The body is called sharira. So, there are three kinds of actions we perform. One action can arise from the mind. Example, your friend wants to buy a mobile 
and uh, she says hey let's go to this uh, store later's mobiles are there let's go uh, have a look you go with your friend to the mobile store and then both of you are looking at the various models and what happens is you end up buying the mobile not your friend and the friend says i'll wait for the next model to come but you end up buying a mobile you already have a mobile but i'm just giving an example and in a, a like you like to have the latest version of an apple or samsung he says so that even though the changes could be or improvements could be minuscule you will buy it it could be an impulsive choice you know, the fir the first kind of a choice we make could be from the mind you already have a mobile but you end up buying another one because you like that model so it is a, an action could arise from the mind second kind of an action is arising from the intellect example right, in the, in the christmas season is approaching or is already there and uh, you have the, you go to a, a friend's place and they say hey why don't you try this uh, the, the cakes are there we are making cakes every day what why don't you try this cheesecake you are a diabetic person your mind craves or likes that cake the cheesecake but your intellect your buddhi says i can't have it anymore any more any more of sweets would affect my health so you follow your intellect which is not to consume the cake this is the second kind of action and the third kind of action is where your mind likes it and the intellect supports it like this master class that's what i wish all of you you know you like your mind likes to listen to profound thoughts and the intellect says hey this is essential for my self development a choice which is a result of mind and the intellect therefore you are attending the lecture you may take notes you may uh, you are very attentive that's why i'm saying all our life from mon from morning to night from birth to death we perform actions an action could arise from your mind like just get that you buy a mobile phone or a costume or an action could arise from the intellect like a diabetic person says no to the cakes or an action could arise from as a combination of mind and intellect like attending the master class all that i'm saying is you are better off if your choices your actions arise either from the intellect or a combination of mind and intellect if your if your choices actions arise only from the mind it could be detrimental now the vedas beautifully gives us an analogy they say the mind is like a flow of water in a river and the intellect is the banks supporting the river i repeat the mind is like a flow of water flowing in a flow of water in a river and the intellect is the banks supporting the river and what the veda says if the banks of the river are strong the water can be used on either sides it is a, it is a blessing it's benevolence if the banks of the river are weak what happens the you know the water overflows it inundates the field what was a blessing becomes a curse friends that's why i want to tell you when the mind is powerful and the intellect is weak that's when you become a victim of any kind of an addiction or depression any kind of an emotional inadequacies you go through is because your mind is way too strong and your intellect your buddhi is not strong enough to control the mind to supervise the mind that's why you know we're going to show, show the next slide that the, the different uh, the quality of choice is eccentric see you see the in the graph you can see the Zero to hundred. It is uh, when when you are uh, let's see uh, zero to hundred. If you see O E F, it is insane. Entire thing is hundred percent. I mean only the mind. And if uh, the uh, the choices or you know the discrimination is is twenty five percent and uh, and the mind is seventy five percent, you could be hysterical. you don't know how you function it 100% mind is insane 75% mind is hysterical 50% of your mind means you are eccentric you know you you can have terrible behaviors and then uh, 25% of your mind 
and uh, 75 percent you know, of your intellect you know, it could be emotional and 100 percent of intellect I, I would say a, a combination of mind and intellect you are a sane person this is a sexual puts across no? all the world will stand up and say here is a man just to be a human being it takes a lot of effort friends we could be in that zone of 100 percent 100 percent mind which is the state of insanity 75 percent is hysterical 50 percent mind is eccentric 25 percent itself is emotional 100 percent where it's a combination of mind and intellect is where you are better off or you are a sane person meaning it could be pandemic it could be fluctuations in the economy you still are able you have the clarity with which you make the decisions your choices now you can take off the slide so so that's why i'm saying this is how important your mind and intellect are they say the another another analogy the scriptures give us they say the mind is like a, a knife in the kitchen it is, it is uh, if a person says i if a person if he has murdered two people and he says why did you do it either in my place i have a, a dozen knives i hardly use it i tried it on this person it was really smooth you can't blame the knife friends you can't blame the knife similarly you can't blame the mind mind is the most wonderful equipment which is nothing but the nature's gift to us is how well you use the mind and another anal i'm giving you various analogies so that you will understand in a better way the mind is equated to a child intellect to the adult what happens to your beautiful apartment if it's left to a three-year-old child and you're on a holiday when you come back it's a mess similarly your life must be handled by the intellect and the combination of mind and intellect rather than the mind alone rather than the mind alone it is in the words of Vivekananda, you conquer your mind, you will conquer the world. Fall prey to your mind, you become a victim of the world. That's right. So watch out, friends. Mind is beautiful. It's how well you use it. How well you use the mind that matters in our life. Now, the next aspect I'm going to share with you is the three conditions of the mind. Each one of us, we go through three conditions of the mind. Saurabh, you can share that slide, the three conditions of the mind. The first condition of the mind is what I call as a restless mind. You can see that, a restless mind. Imagine there is a cone, I, I place it on its tip. I'm placing the cone on its tip. It can never remain static. It will fall down. Similarly, friends, a person whose mind is very self-centered, a person who is selfish, self-centered, by design, they want the world to cater to them all the time. A selfish person needs the world to cater to them all the time. So it is, uh, let me tell you, the world we are living in is not designed for one person. Therefore, we will be restless, agitated most of the time, like a cone which can never remain on its tip. It will fall down. A restless mind is that. They can get agitated for anything. That they may be there in the master class now. They say, I mean, the screen is too small. I need a bigger screen. The screen is there, but the air conditioner is not good enough. The air conditioner screen is there, but a person who's sitting next to them, they're shaking their legs. Something or the other keeps agitating, frustrating them. A restless mind, which belongs to a, a selfish person. The second condition of the mind is called, on the right hand side, you see an imperfect mind. Imagine I place the cone on one of its side on the table. It remains static. It is there. But when I tap the cone, it starts oscillating. The oscillations continue for a while and then it comes to a standstill. Similarly, friends, an imperfect mind. Most, more, many people fall under this category, an imperfect mind. And it belongs to an unselfish person. An unselfish person is one who can accommodate others' interests. But one negative incident, one experience which is not in their favor will alter their peace and tranquility, will alter. And depending on that incident, the agitations continue. It may continue for a few hours or it may continue for many years. One negative 
experience. In the example, you know, a lady decides she is invited for a charity dinner and she decides to donate twenty-five thousand rupees for the charity, and she she takes her husband along and she's there well dressed and all ready for the charity dinner. There is some uh, cultural program happening at that time. One of the organizers and a distant friend then comes and and uh, sees her and you know meets her, greets her. And then says, "Hey, what happened? You seem to have aged fast. Some comment, or you put on weight." And this lady gets so agitated. So you know, she was prepared to give twenty-five thousand, and then you know, one comment of the organizer, she gets upset and she tells her husband, "You know, you don't need to give twenty-five. Just give ten thousand. That's enough." And the husband is very, very happy. Let her meet a few more people. It will come down to five thousand. All that I'm saying is, imperfect mind. You're okay. You mean you know you're you're generally peaceful. One incident is enough to alter you, alter your peace and tranquility. It can it can alter you. It can agitate you for thirty minutes, three hours, or thirty days, or thirty years. One negative experience. I'm not many people. I'm sure in this master class there there could have been many people who could have got their ego involved because of one incident. With a person, with their near and dear, and now they don't be, they're not talking to each other for maybe three years, maybe some people ten years. One negative experience, you get your ego involved, and it alters your peace and tranquility. Imperfect mind, imperfect mind. You've got to be watchful, friend. And the last condition, see, both the restless mind and the imperfect mind. they both need to be need to go on a diet the diet plan is essential for both selfish and unselfish they know you need the diet plan otherwise you could be in trouble the last condition i would say the perfect mind is one which has gone through the diet plan and is now perfect meaning they go through the life experiences they have maximum pleasure and joy and tranquility see elder you, you may You say how how is it possible? I'll give you the story. It happened in the life of Buddha. One of the days, Lord Buddha, after his session, was going back to his kuti, to his place, and he was going along with his students, disciples. Halfway through, a stranger stopped Lord Buddha and started insulting him, abusing him. To which Lord Buddha was quiet, calm, patiently listening. And then the stranger left. and then lord buddha was walking back to his place every day in his ashram there used to be uh, an interaction with the master so at the time the his disciples can ask questions clarifications and one of the one of his disciples raised his hand and said sir i have a question he said yes what's the question do you remember this afternoon a stranger insulted you to which lord buddha which stranger who are you talking about he couldn't even recollect then the student gave the entire scenario he said master after the in the, after the lecture we are going back to our place there was a stretch of agricultural fields one of them was working there the moment he saw you he came up to you and started insulting you do you remember he said yes now nah. yes i remember what about that asked lord buddha he said master when he was insulting you you should have countered his argument you should have you know you should have pulverized him but you kept quiet why were you quiet when he was insulting you to which lord buddha told his student he said it was his privilege to give his opinion and my privilege to accept it or not he said it was his privilege to give my privilege to take he gave me many many things i said no thank you you can keep it. perfect mind friends the such a mind has this attitude is that so is that so how you know if you when somebody praises you within yourself you're not telling outside is that sir somebody denounces you when that there is fulfillment within contentment within there will be a perfect mind is that sir you know you will continue with your life in a glorious way that's why you know the that's sort of the first two my first two you know, the restless and an imperfect mind needs to be needs to go on a diet a perfect mind is one which is the which is experiencing the tranquility self sufficiency because it had gone on a, a diet plan 
you know, I would like to you know, share the words of uh, John Milton. You know, Saurabh, you can share that uh, slide. Beautiful uh, quotation. The mind in its own place can make a hell out of a heaven or a heaven out of a hell. It's all in the mind. The mind in its own place can make a heaven of a hell or a hell of a heaven. Therefore, friends, heaven or hell is not geographical locations, but a state of mind. If you make your thoughts and emotions pure, I'm telling you, it's a heaven on earth. And many of us, we look at, I would say, most of the life, 70 person is going right and the 30 person is not going right. Most of us focus on the 30 percent, which is not right. As a result, the 70 percent, which is which is good, you don't have an access to it. The 30 yeah. becomes 40, and 40 becomes 50. Now you are messed up. Your life. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. So. Mr. Sridharan, you're on mute. Oh, Mr. Sridharan, you're still on mute. Mute, sir. Sir, you got on a mute. Yeah. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. How long have you been on mute? Um, maybe like 20, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll just put you live back again. Yeah. Am I live now? Yes. Yes, you are, sir. Yeah. Okay. Friends, the diet plan for the mind, the important aspect of this master class. Huh? Let me listen to it carefully. It will change your life. I guarantee. When I say change your life, applying it, it will change your life. Number one. Express gratitude, but do not expect gratitude. A simple statement, but a very profound transformational state in your life. Gratitude, ex express gratitude. Gra See, everyone says you've got to be grateful, but how can you, how would you become grateful? There are two aspects to becoming grateful. Number one, you've got to be aware of so much you've been provided from the time you've been born till the time you're there. That awareness of all that you've been receiving, plus your inability to repay that benevolence. Your inability to repay that benevolence makes you grateful. Mere thought of that, that awareness of all that you get, you may be there. But the second is the clincher. Your inability to repay that benevolence makes you grateful. Therefore, friends, express gratitude. But do not expect gratitude. I mean, it's not a downer. If you expect gratitude, you could be in trouble. Because, you know, how can these people be this way? No, that is how people are. That is how people are. You know, express your gratitude to one and all. My gratitude to Sridhar Reddy. You know, or to all of you, you know, to make this happen. You know, my, my wife was mentioning the beautiful arrangements. You know, the auditorium set up or all that was fabulous. I mean, how can we, I'm aware of it and, and the second aspect, inability to repay the benevolence. Therefore, that's why I say I'm grateful. I still remember in uh, Control S, there was a huge gratitude wall. Gratitude wall where so many people expressed it. So express your gratitude, but do not expect gratitude. Number two, receive gracefully and give joyfully whatever you're receiving. Ever receive gracefully, gracefully receive. And then like, whatever you have to give, give joyfully. Don't give grudgingly. Give joyfully and receive gracefully. Could be a salary, could be a gift, could be the day when you wake up in the morning. How do you address? Now, all those who attend my lectures regularly, I mean, there is this mantra. When you wake up in the morning, first thought is pronounce to Mata, Pita, Guru, Deva. The, uh, gratitude to mother, father, my master and the almighty. I'm telling you, no? the, it is, it's beautiful. Then you'll receive gracefully and give joyfully. Third, be slow to judge and quick to forgive. 
we are the other way around we are quick to judge and impossible to forgive be slow to judge and quick to forgive but judgments either highlights more about you than the other person your judgment of the other is more your a reflection of the quality of your thoughts than the character of the person be slow to judge and quick to forgive i'm telling you now if only you get into the state of forgiveness it is those who are who have gratitude and love they can they experience forgiveness forgiveness they say is to set the prisoner free and to finally understand the prisoner was none other than yourself forgiveness is setting yourself free the great mark twain gave a beautiful definition of forgiveness he said forgiveness is a fragrance a violet releases as the foot crushes it you could be crushed but what you release is forgiveness next the diet plan is be dependable and not dependent dependable is is a leadership quality friends depend you become dependable when you give your 120% every time you take up a responsibility it is it is why even in sports they say he is a very dependable player because if he is there he gives it, he or she gives their 120% every time they perform be dependable and not dependent dependent is you want your happiness is so much club with other aspects with your spouse with your work with your salary with your promotion with the covid vaccine so much i mean uh, be dependable and not dependent if you are dependent you will fluctuate you are in the state of restlessness you know you will see got to be cautious next in the diet plan what you expect from others first you expect from yourself if you want your your colleagues to be productive if you want your if the products to be of a certain caliber if you want your team to perform in a certain way first you expect you know, let that come from you it is uh, in the words of gandhi he said you know be the change you wish to see in the world you must be the change you wish to see in the world what you expect from others first expect from yourself then in the diet plan be expressive with your love and demonstrative of your happiness i'm telling you this when you express your love and gratitude for one another expressive of your love and demonstrative of your happiness let me tell you i'm so happy meeting all of you virtually even though very few uh, very few cameras are on i'm saying i'm so happy meeting all of you and you, know, you have no idea what happiness i derive it is it is a demonstrative of your happiness you have a meal demonstrate that I mean, uh, you are happy with the meal. Right? Tell them it was a wonderful meal, or you, know, you had a enjoy the day. It's a had a great day. They be expressive with your love and demonstrative of your happiness. Many of us are demonstrative of our unhappiness and expressive of our emotions, negative emotions. Whenever you have an anger, do you spare your anger? There's a saying: speak when you are angry. you will make the greatest speech you will ever regret speak when you are angry you will make the greatest speech you will ever regret that's why in the other way around the diet plan is be expressive with your love and demonstrative of your happiness you have no idea what it does to this the mental framework of yours next in the diet plan trust even if your trust is broken trust again i am not suggesting you trust the untrustworthy people here you you have trusted they say only way to know whether you can trust a person is by trusting them having trusted them now you are you have learned a lesson i am not suggesting trust the same person but have trust in this potential of trust as long as we are human beings we have a choice of action and as long as we have a choice of action there is a potential of greatness in each one of us each one of us is an infinite potential have trust in the human potential that's what i'm saying i am not suggesting trusting untrustworthy people yeah. you you burnt your finger once well, be cautious but don't lose trust anyone who loses trust becomes very insecure in life that's why i'm saying so watch out friends watch out then bring selflessness into your life serve in some capacity expecting nothing in return i'm sure 
this Thai Global Summit is happening because of the selfless service of so many volunteers. You know, that's what Bring selflessness into your life, serving in some capacity, expecting nothing in return. It, it fulfills your, your soul, friends. Next, in the diet plan, have faith in divinity. Have one connect which is beyond your judgment. It's a very important aspect of the diet plan. There must be at least one connect which is beyond our judgment. If everyone whom you interact comes under the purview of your judgment, it could be difficult. Have faith in divinity. Things are either happening in the right way. You, know, you, you may not understand it now, but on a, on a later, scale, later stage in life, you'll understand that incident which, which happened was perfectly placed. Next, be a multi-role wonder. Bring balance into your life. Be, be a multi-role wonder by bringing balance into your life. Play, we say that world has seen enough one-role wonders, friends. With the right diet plan in life, you will be a multi-role wonder. You are a fabulous entrepreneur, a successful uh, uh, businessman. You are a, a loving spouse, an adorable parent, a responsible citizen, a uh, a wonderful friend. All that I'm saying is we can all be that way. So let's be a multi-role wonder. I mean, I'd like to yeah. conclude the diet plan with, with the words of the Vedas. Mm -hmm. say, the Vedas highlight, when I came into this world, as I cried, the world rejoiced. The Vedas highlight, when I came into this world, as I cried, the world rejoiced. It goes on to say, and it, it says, when I, when I leave this world, let the world cry while I rejoice. I repeat, when I came into this world, as I cried, the world rejoiced. When I leave this world, let the world cry while I rejoice. The satisfaction, that fulfillment, that contentment of having done what I have to be done. When in case that eventual date happens, you're, you almost take a salute. It was a fabulous life. And friends, this is a result of following the diet plan properly. As a result, a life is different. So thank you all for that time, your presence, your attention. Thank you.